You've heard it said again and again, your screenplay needs high stakes. Well, what does that mean exactly? So everyone thinks their life is exciting and dramatic. I used to write screenplays in Burger King. I got sick of the Starbucks vibe and there was more tables in Burger King. And Burger King regulars would come over and say, what are you doing there, little missy? And I'd say, I'm a screenwriter. And they'd say, oh, I've got a good story for you. And then proceed to tell me a really long, detailed story about like a public storage unit and who had custody of it boring. Usually most things in life are boring, but not always. I used to live a couple miles down the road next to this really sketchy hotel that we think is just populated with drug addicts and ne'er-do-wells. So one day there was one of these guys high on bath salts or something, and he's walking out on the street, stopping cars, jumping up on their hood, screaming at him. So I have to call 911 and guide the LA helicopters over. Then I saw him the next day in Starbucks acting like nothing was happening, getting his little Java Frappuccino. Well, there you go. And then another day, we had another crazy person on bath salts or something. This one was dressed as Jesus. He went up into our stairwell. He took the fire extinguisher off the hook in the hallway, knocked on my neighbor's door. Then when she opened the door, he starts spraying her whole apartment with the fire extinguisher. We had this white powder on everything for months. Jesus with a fire extinguisher. So if I read a script and it's about someone who, you know, they kind of are trying to get into law school, but it's really their dad who wants them to go to law school, and they don't really know if they want to go to law school, and they're starting a romance with this girl they met at the coffee shop, and she does like open mics and plays a guitar, and they're getting to... Boring! Boring! I'm bored. I'm bored. My life is more exciting than the screenplay. Your story needs some stakes to give it some importance, to give it some weight. But what does that mean? High stakes. The best stakes are life and death stakes. And that doesn't have to mean literal death. Not everything has to be like, you know, die hard in the apartment building. But if it's not a literal death, you know, there are some things that people would think are worse than death. You know, like a life without love or a life without magic, a life without creative self-expression, a life without dreams. There are things that are worse than death. So it's either a literal death, someone's life is on the line, or there's like an emotional death. Now, if you're thinking, ah, oh, I'm writing this funny comedy. It's these guys and they're running around and they're smoking weed. It's just fun and it's just a popcorn movie so I don't have to worry about stakes. Yes, you do. It will still enhance your movie. Take for instance the movie Dodgeball, like the silliest movie ever, right? It still has stakes. They put stakes in that screenplay. So it's about the Vince Vaughn character. He owns this gym called Average Joe's and he owes a bunch of money. He's going to lose the gym to the big bad gym owned by Ben Stiller and you know, okay, that's his dream. He's going to lose his gym, but that's not really enough. It's not like life and death stakes. So they have a scene where this character, this kid, he's a high school kid. They're debating this like, you know, we're, we're not going to be able to raise this money. We're going to lose the gym. He says, no, we can't lose the gym. It's too important. He says to one of the other guys, where do you go when your wife changes the locks? He says, average Joe's. So in other words, average Joe's is like his true home. He doesn't have a real home. He's got a flaky situation. It's where his real home is. It's where he has acceptance and love. He goes to another character. What are you going to do if Average Joe's closes down? Are you going to go back to work at the airport? He goes, oh no, I hated that job at the airport. So that guy, if Average Joe's goes under, is going to have some miserable job that he hates and his life's going to be terrible. And then the kid says, I can't go back to the gym at the high school, they're going to laugh at me there and they're going to lock me in lockers and make me eat clay. So Average Joe's is a place where it is safe. 
He is respected. The kid ends his little speech with, I need this place. You guys need this place. So they took a whole scene to emphasize that this gym isn't just a gym. It's so much more for these characters. So even in a broad comedy, you got to get those stakes in. Now, how about a romantic comedy? This one is the one that I see blowing it on stakes the worst. People assume that just because you've got she's cute and she's single and he's cute and he's single that the audience will care that they get together. We don't. We don't because if she's so cute and wonderful she could find someone else and if he's so nice and wonderful he could find someone else. The trick, and there are a lot of tricks to romantic comedies and we'll do a video on that later, but one of the main tricks and why they're so hard is you've got to show these two people are so meant to be together that if these two specific people don't get together their lives aren't going to have any love, that they change each other so much. She changes him. He changes her. There's something special about their relationship. And you usually establish that through conflict, not through happy, happy, nice dates. People get that wrong. That's another video. But you've got to show that if these two people don't get together, their lives are just going to be nothing. And so even in a romantic comedy, you have to have stakes. So take Sleepless in Seattle. In this one, all the characters have stakes. So the Meg Ryan character is facing marrying a guy who's dull and life just is flat. And she's wondering, is there any magic in life? Does life have magic? Is it just boring and dull and it's just about going through the motions? And so if she doesn't get together with him, her life is not going to have magic. It's not going to have passion. It's just going to be dead. And then also the Tom Hanks character. He had this incredible love for his wife and he's told in the beginning, it doesn't happen twice. Like give up. You're never going to have great love in your life again. But then Meg Ryan, we can see is so similar to the wife. He could have it again with her. He's got to meet her because he could have it again with her. So we want them to get together. And also the kid, Tom Hanks son, he doesn't have a mom anymore and he wants a mom. And so he's trying to not only make sure his dad is happy, but he wants a mom again. So this is serious stakes and they show Meg Ryan peels an apple the exact same way the mom used to peel the apple. Like they put little magic in there. So you just know these two are meant to be together. They've got to get together. It's specific. So in a romantic comedy, those are the stakes. If these two people don't get together, they will not have love in their life because they're so meant to be together. Now, how about dramas? You still have to have those internal stakes. You got to have that, but you can also still squeeze, manipulate in there some more external, bigger stakes without having to change the plot too much. So take American Beauty and like the very first page of the screenplay, we have I'm going to die. Within a year, I'm going to die. So there are life and death stakes right there. And because we know that, we can then be much more patient with a plot that isn't like life and death stakes every moment. He's not fighting aliens. He's not fighting zombies. He's not fighting terrorists. You know, he's not fighting for his life at every moment. More recently, there was the HBO series Big Little Liars, where they open it showing you like, you know, there's a crime scene going on and you know someone died and somebody else killed them, but you don't even know who died and you don't know who killed them. And that was enough mystery. You know, those stakes are high. Somebody's going to die that you could go through a whole series that without that would have been like, so what they were dealing with things like there was a little girl being bullied at school and they didn't know which child was bullying the little girl. And another character had drama with a play she was trying to produce. They were trying to shut down her play and she's trying to get the play going. If it didn't have the life or death stakes, you wouldn't have the patience for all that. So you can actually have some life or death stakes in a drama. You can promise that in the end with, without having to have people constantly battle for their lives throughout. Now, if you're thinking, well, I've got high stakes. My movie is about scientists trying to stop the sun from exploding and everybody's going to die. So I'm good to go. Not so much. Every script, even if it has great external stakes, you still need life or death internal stakes because that is the foundation for your character arc to have it be big enough to support your story. So now let's talk about some mistakes, contrived or silly stakes. Like people know they need high stakes in a script. So sometimes like shove some crazy plot on top of a story and it doesn't belong. 
tonally it could be just totally wrong. It could eclipse the story that's there. So they could have some really great character driven script going on, but then all of a sudden they throw in like a lone shark who's going to come kill the protagonist if they don't pay up. Something that just turns the movie into something it's not. There's a story about the script Goodwill Hunting that it used to have this whole thriller plot line and the NSA was after them and they had to give them the slip. They took that out. So you've got to stick to the tone of your script and not try to put stakes in so hard that you turn it into the kind of movie it's not. Or you see this a lot in romantic comedies. The romantic comedy will just be, oh, aren't they cute? Mm, they're just mm, having nice little dates, tra la la, nothing scary is happening. And all of a sudden, wham, you know, he's got to save her from a helicopter that's going to crash. Like it all of a sudden turns into this action movie at the end. Like what? It's crazy. Or this one is classic. I see this so many times. They'll make one of the characters pregnant. It has nothing to do with the story whatsoever, but then at the very end to make a climax and make it life or death stakes, like suddenly she's having birth and we've got to get her to the hospital. Ah, and it had nothing to do with the story. So make sure you don't try to crank it up so high that you lose what you have because a really well done drama that has strong emotional stakes can totally work. You don't have to shove a lone shark in there and a woman giving birth in the end and some action with a helicopter. Unnecessary. So I hope this video helped you. If it did, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye.